My family uh, uh, comes from, from Mexico. You know, I, I saw a, uh, a grandmother that every morning, um, before she did anything, she would, you know, get up real early, 4.30. I thought my grandma was crazy. Why you get up so early, right? Uh, but she would get up at 4.30 in the morning and she would begin her prayer. And she would begin praying and, and, um, and, and I would hear her in her prayer and sometimes in her, um, you know, in her prayer it sounded like a song, like a chant, like, a, like she was uh, beginning the reverberation of, of, of her day. And, and she would you know, call to those spirits uh, she would uh, ask for assistance. She would, uh, you know, beckon for, uh, for, for blessings. And, it, and, and, and in my mind, what I began to realize what my grandma was doing is that she was, you know, connecting with that greater source, that sacredness, and that is generations old for her. Because her grandmother did that, and her grandmother did that, and her grandmother. So that she was connecting with this lineage of, of, of uh, a spirit keepers, of, of, of tradition holders, of, uh, of, of sacred messengers, and, 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 and bringing to that the sacredness of, of her God, of her sacred creator. And, and, and then after she uh, finished that, she would then come to where we were sleeping as children. We all slept in, in one room, and, and she would uh, then bless us, give us a blessing, a bendición. And, and as a little boy, I used to hate it sometimes. She'd wake me up early. Go, Grandma, why are you waking me up so early, right? Can't you bless me later? Isn't God around later, you know? <laughs> you blessed me last night. Is it still good for right now? <laughs> why I need another blessing, you know? And, and what, what I didn't understand is the... the um, not only the significance of that, but the impact of that. That, that what she was doing is connecting me uh, to generational medicine. She was connecting me to ancestors that seven generations ago uh, prayed for me. When I was just a dream, uh, just a hope, uh, that she was sending a message to me that they wanted me to know. And that message was that I was sacred, that I was a blessing, and that within the essence of who I was, that I carried a sacred purpose and a sacred responsibility uh, to carry on that prayer, if you will, carry on that song, carry on that ritual, carry on that tradition, so that those prayers wouldn't be wasted, so that those dreams, those sacrifices, and you know, when I think about it today, I can't even imagine, you know, what my ancestors did, what they had to sacrifice through, uh, what pains they had to carry, and that they didn't give up that they continued praying, they continued singing, they con continued uh, dancing, uh, they continued forward in order that, that, that I could wake up that morning and that my grandmother would be there and somebody would bless me. But what my grandmother also understood is that she had to inoculate me. She had to, to, to medicine me up because she knew that there were going to be times in which not only was I not going to feel like a blessing, just for how I looked and, and, and what I reflected to the society and my skin coloration and my features and, and what that reflected to people, that people weren't going to see me as a blessing. They were going to see me as, as, as the enemy. They were going to see me as a perpetrator. They were going to see me as a, a delinquent, as a, as a gang member. They were going to see me as a, the potential person they were going to lock up, that they were going to drug up, they were going to medicate, that, that they wanted to deport. She knew that she had to, to bless me up so that I would 
in my spirit, remember that song. Remember that prayer. Remember that wish. Remember that blessing so that I wouldn't give up and so that I wouldn't give in. She also knew that because of the way of this society and its woundedness, that there were people that would want to conquer me, that would want to tear me down and break me up and, and make me hate myself so much that I would hurt people that look like me, that I would destroy people that look like me, that I would look in the mirror and not like myself, and, and they would shame me of, of even wanting to be like my father or my mother or anybody that looked like me. She knew all of this. Her spirit knew that. So she got up real early in the morning, gathered those prayers and inoculated me up and blessed me up. And I don't uh, uh, disregard the blessing of growing up in Compton, you know, straight out of Compton, you know, uh, because uh, what I realized that there was sacredness right there. That, you know, my grandma and my mama, and, but, but my best friend Tyrone's mama too. Because when we go pick him up, I go pick him up for school, and, and uh, Miss Mosley was a big lady, right? And, and she used to call me, baby, come here, baby, you know? And uh, I thought I was a big boy, but you didn't mess with Miss Mosley. <laughs> she had a cane, and she knew about consistency of follow through. <laughs> you didn't pay attention, she consistently follow through on you. She had a reputation, you know? But, uh, but she called me baby, and when, and when I go get her, she said, bless you, child, bless you, baby. She blessed me up, too.